taking a stand against literally any sin, it will always get you labeled a holier than thou and a Pharisee. Okay, that's straight out of the playbook. It's an old playbook, uh, and it's it's absolutely ridiculous. People who will accuse someone of being a holier than thou because they don't believe in using vulgarity and profanity don't even know what a holier than thou is. Okay, and watch out too. That person whose mouth is full of guile. We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit when they try to attach a sin to you and they'll use biblical phrases. They'll use biblical terms like holier than thou because it's in the Bible. And so I'm, you know, I'm just preaching the Bible. Okay, but let's make sure if we call someone a holier than thou that we're using it in the same context or the same way that the Bible did. Now, let's look at where that term comes from and let's see what an actual holier than thou is. Isaiah 65, one says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Now, folks, there's no question about how to interpret that passage right there because the Apostle Paul talked about it in the New Testament. The Gentiles found salvation when they weren't looking for it. But the very people that God had called to salvation, that God prepared the covenants for, were rejecting it. And the Gentiles were finding it before the Jews. And so he says, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon the altars of bricks, brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say... Okay, this is talking about the Jews, and they're saying this to the Gentiles. This is prophetic. This is exactly what they did in the New Testament when Jesus came, which say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose and a fire that burneth all the day. So understand the holier than thou were people, one, who weren't saved and who were rejecting a people who did get saved. You have the Gentiles who did have a different way of life than what the Jews did. And the way the Jews lived was a lot better, closer to the Bible than the Gentiles that were eating, you know, that were idolatrous, eating meat, sacrificed to idols, committing fornication. And they, they did, they had a lot of problems, but those Gentiles believed on Christ. Those Gentiles received salvation. And we see in the Bible that the Jews, they did not like seeing Gentiles being accepted by other Jews who were saved. They wanted to separate themselves from them. And so you had a people who weren't even saved looking at a group of people who did get saved and saying, you stay away from me. I'm holier than thou. Okay. So that's what a real holier than thou is. So now obviously you can make application, um, you know, with something like that. It doesn't have to be that exact same situation, but at the same time, here's how I think you could be a holier than thou today is when somebody comes and they get saved, but you, a church maybe rejects them because they've just got too much baggage. Okay. That's, that's not good. You know, maybe they're all tattooed up, you know, maybe they, they still, you know, look freakish like the world and you're, and even though that person is saved, even though that person is repentant, you're still going to reject them. And, and that's the thing. These Gentiles, they were repentant. They did believe on Christ. They found salvation, even though they hadn't been looking for it, and yet they were rejected by a bunch of Jews who thought they were better than everybody else and at the same time weren't saved. So the thing is, as a Christian, we should always be forgiving. We should always uh, accept people who are wanting to come back in the fold, people who are repentant. We should forgive 70 times seven. And when we won't do that because they've just, they're have just they sinning too much, that's when you're a holier than thou. But when you're calling out unrepentant sin, that's not being a holier than thou. Okay? A church, when they have to uh, remove someone from the church because of sin, that church is not being a holier than thou. Now, if that person repents of their sin and they the church still won't let them come back because they have defiled themselves somehow, you know, some girl committed fornication and therefore she's defiled, she's never allowed back in membership of the church. Now, that's being a holier than thou. Calling out sin, calling out any sin is not being a holier than thou, okay? 
you're being gaslit when people bring that kind of thing up, when they go to that passage to call out somebody who's just taking a stand against sin. And uh, you ought to be able to see right through that kind of thing. So again, most people who say holier than thou don't even know what one is. Let's use Bible terms the way the Bible uses them. 